Hi everyone and welcome along to today's video. This one concerns the old FNE systems. Yeah, the feed and expansion tank in the loft. And the problems that a lot of you are having with air, especially if you have to work on the system at all. And also the fact that the expansion, you've got an open pipe there that can drag air down and gradually get air into the system, especially if they're partially blocked up with sludge or it's a very badly fitted system. This can happen with any system that's an F&E, but what's an answer to this problem? What, what can we do about it? It keeps happening. Well, one way out of it is to get rid of the F&E tank. Let's get rid of it altogether, the expansion pipe a lot, and let's convert it to a pressurised system. That way, there's no way air is going to come down that vent or even down that cold feed and we're going to eliminate most of the problems straight off. So, how difficult is it to do this job? Well, you can look on YouTube, there's plenty of guys showing this, so I'm not going to show you how to fit one because there's plenty of videos on there already. But I will show you a schematic drawing of how easy it is because if you've got an airing cupboard, most of your pipes go up through there and it's quite easy to make the conversion to a pressure vessel system. Now I'll give you a link to a full system kit which is a pressure vessel and a free bar safety valve so if you don't over pressurise it and you run that to a drain and basically the, the kit, the filling loop really which will enable you to do this little conversion. I'll show you what I mean now on this little sketch. So here's one of our dodgy drawings uh, where well, it's not that bad really. I did use a ruler this time, got some straight lines. Look a bit better, doesn't it? Anyway, it's a rough kind of sketch of an airing cupboard. I've made it a little bit wide just to show you uh, the feeds and cuts and things. You probably ain't got that much room in there as that. But you should have enough room in there to fit the pressure vessel on the back wall. So, let's have a look what we've got to do here then. So, we, it's very important, really, if you've got the rising main coming up there, coming up into the F&E tank and coming up into the main tank. If that main's in another room, it, it makes life very awkward because it's a much more difficult job because you've got that rising main's got to be brought around to go into this pressure vessel. But luckily, most airing covers, mine did here in my house, come up in the airing covers and all the council houses I used to work in Grays End, they all did the same. So what we're going to do here, well, first thing, shut the water main off downstairs. Well, obvious. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it need telling. Shut the water main off and cut yourself in a stopcock here somewhere on this main. And then turn that off and you can turn your main back on downstairs and you'll add water to the kitchen and the toilets and things while you do this job so you're not cut off completely. So what we're going to do now is locate the drain valve which will be downstairs somewhere on the ground floor put a hose on first job then would be to cut this main here there it is there and put a T in I'll put a T in facing this way okay and that's got the main connected now to go to this what we've got to do then though is go up in a loft and make a cut where it feeds this tank. Now you can either cut it through there and put a blank on or you can make a proper job of it and cut it and put a coupling on so it just goes straight on and around to the main tank. Effectively then we'll cut this off then we can come down we can cut through the vent where we're going to be opposite the main to make it easier and take this pipe out you won't want it anymore screw your vessel up on the wall and basically what we could do is put a little bit of copper tube in here into your T piece and fit the filling loop wherever it's accessible best for you every cupboard's different so it's not a do or die thing it's got to be where it's right for you fit a bit of copper tube fit the filling loop which will have two valves one on either end to your pressure vessel when you get your vessel you'll have a valve that goes on the bottom of it there's a free bar pressure relief valve so that you don't over pressurize this thing and on that you've got to have a little pipe going out to a drain somewhere because that is in case you over pressurize it the valve will click off at free bar and allow the water to go outside 
and the idea of that is to save your vessel from over expanding with too much pressure and also protect your heating system as well you don't want too much pressure going in there so that's what that is for under that you'll have the gauge and then you'll have your connection basically you connect your filling loop up to a little bit of pipe there with a T on it so that it's connected in circuit then you have your T here connect it up and then run your other bit of copper pipe back round here but when you get to the vent here you saw and through that took it out already just put an elbow on it and down like that now the, the basic thing is connected but there's one last thing that's very easy to forget to do <laughs> it's very simple this cold feed that comes out of this tank okay it's still connected to your system probably down by the boiler or sometimes it might be into this return here it might come down like that and go across here but whatever that will still be open up here into the tank well you won't you would have cut it out but that means now that we can make a cut anywhere that's convenient i put it down here but make sure you put a blank on the end that connects it to the boiler or whatever to the system a blank over then we can take all this cold feed out as well that goes up here to the tank get the lot out get your scrap value <laughs> help against the costs <laughs> basically now you you're fully connected and you can turn the main on your stopcock and then start filling it up uh, and you'll see the gauge move as you start to fill it get up between 1.2 and 1.5 bars and then you still will have to check rads for air just in case you went too low with the draining and get any air out and then you're good to go okay so that's about it then all our videos, you know where to go, the usual place, Derek and 33. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.